Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements for other Healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are your go-to source for all things health and nutrition. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, questions about our Truth Skin Health products, which are available at truthtreatments.com, questions about the longevity products, Questions about the Longevity business, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the Bright Side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a Longevity business. Click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470. You can order products by calling 866-735-2470, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Call 866-735-2470, or sign up right off the website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All our True Skin Health products are available at truthtreatments.com, including our brand new collagen recovery complex blemish repair complex by the way for you guys who have asked will be out again hopefully next week and of course you can check out our truth biomimetic mineral mist our truth honey high hyaluronic acid cleansers and our truth peppermint salicylic cleanser as well as all our truth treatments at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com never any preservatives fragrances fillers waxes emulsifiers silicon water nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And speaking of the skin, we've been talking about acetic acid and apple cider vinegar for the skin, the short chain fatty acids, the uh, uh, alpha hydroxy acids, which most folks have heard about, are versions of the short chain fatty acids. The short chain fatty acids are one of the three lengths of fats, dietary fats and biological fats that are found in the body. Long, medium, short, acetic acid being a short-chain fatty acid, acetic acid, the active ingredient in apple cider vinegar, and this is why apple cider vinegar can be used topically on the skin to stimulate the production, like all the alpha-hydroxy acids, to stimulate the production of connective tissue to improve the surface of the skin. The skin, the connective tissue in the skin is an electrical generator. The skin itself is an electrical generator. The epidermis is piezoelectric and pyroelectric. That means it turns heat and pressure into electricity. Likewise, the dermis, the connective tissue in the skin, 90% of the skin is the dermis and the connective tissue is also bioelectrical and photonic. It generates light as well as electricity. This is why the skin and the connective tissue is not just about beauty and appearance, but rather an important health system. Taking care of the skin is a health issue. It's not a beauty issue. It's a health issue. Thinning skin, wrinkle prone skin is not just about how the skin appears, but it's also about the health of the tissue. Driving collagen production in the skin allows the skin to do its job more efficiently. Taking care of the skin from a topical perspective, using alpha hydroxy acids on the skin, using acetic acid on the skin, using apple cider vinegar on the skin, red wine on the skin, orange juice and apple juice on the skin, 
glycolic acid solutions on the skin, vitamin C on the skin. It's about helping the skin do its job more efficiently. It's about helping the skin make hormones more efficiently. It's about helping the skin make moisture factors more efficiently. It's about helping the skin make more cells more efficiently. And this is why working on the skin, working on the epidermis, as well as working on the dermis to drive the production of connective tissue is the single most, perhaps the only critical health and beauty strategy that you ever want to use, driving the production of connective tissue. And oh, by the way, the epidermis, the surface of the skin actually makes connective tissue as well. So driving the production of connective tissue is the single most important strategy that you ever want. There's other things too, but the single most important strategy is driving the production of connective tissue. It's not just about beauty, it's also about health. And it's not, all, it's not just about wrinkles and thinning skin. When you have defects in the matrix, when you have defects in the connective tissue matrix, yes, you're gonna get wrinkles. And yes, you're gonna have thinning skin. But all skin problems are somehow related to connective tissue issues. That means if you're dealing with acne, particularly cystic acne, or if you're dealing with eczema, or psoriasis, or sensitive skin, or if you're trying to accelerate the healing of wounded skin, you want to be applying the same connective tissue building strategies that you would be applying if you wanted to prevent wrinkles. It's not just about wrinkles. It's not just about fine lines. It's not just about photo damage. It's about eczema. Yes, eczema is a connective tissue problem. Psoriasis is a connective tissue problem. Remember, the connective tissue feeds all of the cells. It's the matrix. Matrix meaning mother. Matrix meaning womb. And just like a womb feeds a, a, a fetus, the womb or the matrix, the extracellular matrix in the skin feeds the skin cells. So if you have a defect, if you have something wrong or some kind of a, a breakdown in the extracellular matrix in the dermis, you're going to have skin cell problems that can result in a skin health issue that doesn't even look like it's a connective tissue issue. Eczema, for example, that's a classic example, atopic dermatitis. People think that's a surface issue. It's not a surface issue. It's a connective tissue issue. And from a molecular standpoint, the connective tissue is located deep down in the skin. This is why bone broth is so important and bone broth protein. You ever wonder why bone broth has so many different benefits? It's important for helping folks deal with arthritis. It's important for help folks dealing with bone disease. It's important for dealing with gum disease. It's important for skin health. Why? Because it's all about building the connective tissue. Building the connective tissue is not just about the skin. It's about anti-aging the entire body. Most of the signs of aging, most of the signs of the breakdown, the deterioration of the body, even heart disease and uh, vascular disease, are connective tissue related. That's why using bone broth, using bone broth protein, using vitamin C, using essential fatty acids, correcting digestive health issues, which can impair absorption of, of uh, proteins and vitamins that are important for building connective tissue. All of these strategies build the connective tissue, build the body, and build the skin. And remember, the matrix is where the toxins get dumped off into. So when you have a toxic blood from the impaired digestive process or ingestion of gluten or other food intolerant, or other molecules that create food intolerances, you're going to end up with matrix toxicity. Matrix toxicity will also lead to the breakdown of the connective tissue. Sugar is a major destroyer of the connective tissue. In fact, if, you've, if you're a diabetic and you've had a hemoglobin A1C test, the test uh, that uh, is supposed to determine how fast you're deteriorating from sugar, that's basically connective tissue deterioration. Hemoglobin A1C is the active ingredient in the liquid connective tissue called the blood. So stay away, staying away from food toxins, staying away from sugar, staying away from cigarette smoke. That's another connective tissue destroying element. Cigarette smoke destroys connective tissue like, like, uh, like sugar does. In fact, the lines that you get, uh, that smokers get on the top of their uh, on the top of their uh, mouths, right where, their, right where the uh, mustache area is, those lines, that is a classic sign of connective tissue deterioration. Cigarette smoke destroys connective tissue. And if you're, you're drinking lots of Coke with your, with, your, uh, with your cigarettes, with your cigarette smoke, or ingesting Coca-Cola or any kind of sweets, lots of sweets, that's just going to further deteriorate connective tissue. Use your sweeties, by the way. If you're a uh, sugar junkie, and you're finding that your connective tissue is deteriorating, get on your sweeties. Get on the ultimate niacin. Help the body process sugar. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we are back 
on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on the archive pages at BenFuchsArchives.com and BrightSideBen.com. You can purchase Longevity products at BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com. You can also sign up to join the BrightSide Ben team if you're an entrepreneur or entrepreneurially minded. If nutrition has helped you or your loved ones, if you want to help pay it forward, if you want, always want to be in the health business, now's your opportunity for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, or you can just get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee. Call 866-735-2470 or sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. That phone number again, 866-735-2470. If you want to speak to a real live person to order products or to sign up, 866-735-2470. Or you can sign up or purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories and blog posts, videos, lots of free health information. We're all about sharing the information. Yes, we've got great products. Yes, the Brightside Ben team and Entrepreneur, entrepreneur opportunity at uh, with longevity is awesome. You can make money. You can help uh, spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. But really, we're all about new, helping helping share information about good health. So many of us are sick, and unnecessarily so. The medical model cannot help us. There's nothing in the tools of the medical model that will reverse disease. This is why doctors will tell you there's no cure for disease. They what they mean is they can't do anything about disease. But the body can do it. If we give the body the raw materials it needs and we remove the toxicity, it's pretty much all you need to do. Basically, good stuff in, bad stuff out. It's as simple as that. I hope nobody thinks that's simplistic because it's simple, but it's not simplistic. Good stuff in, nutrition, food, bad stuff out, too many calories, sugar, cigarette smoke, drugs. Isn't that ironic that the drugs and the, uh, the tools of the medical model actually make us worse? And it can't be anything but... Drugs cannot help but make the body worse. I don't know how, how many different ways I could say it or how many times I could say it before it just hits home. Drugs can only make the body worse. Yes, you need them sometimes. Even antibiotics, which kill bacteria, are going to make your body worse in the long run by killing off good bacteria. There's no way a drug is going to improve the biochemistry of the body. It can't happen. That's not the way drugs work. Nutrients, on the other hand, do just that. And this is why a good nutritional supplement program is so important. This is why eating correctly is so important. If you've got questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, or anything we're speaking about here today, we do have lines open, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We're talking about the connective tissue and acetic acid and the short-chain fatty acids and their relationship to the connective tissue. Connective tissue disease is a serious problem. Vasculitis, derm, uh, derm, dermatomyositis, polymyositis, Sjogren's syndrome. Rheumatic diseases, as they call them, or connective tissue diseases, lupus. These are all connective tissue diseases. They're basically the same disorders that are happening in different parts of the body. Vasculitis is the same thing as Sjogren's syndrome. By the way, Sjogren's, Sjogren's syndrome is considered to be the, the most common of the connective tissue diseases. But Sjogren's syndrome is just a connective tissue disease that affects the, the uh, parts of the body that secrete liquids. But vasculitis is the same thing, affecting the blood vessels. Lupus is the same thing. Marfan syndrome. These are all connective tissue diseases, and you don't have to have a full-blown diagnosis to be dealing with a connective tissue disease. You may just end up with deterioration of the connective tissue in the skin that leads to wrinkles and fine lines. This is why some people consider aging to be a disease. It's not really a disease, but many of the symptoms are similar. So whether you call it lupus or scleroderma or Sjogren's syndrome or vasculitis, you're dealing with a connective tissue disease. There's even a connective tissue disease that's called mixed connective tissue disease, which is basically when all the connective tissue falls apart. Think about these diagnoses that makes them so difficult to address and understand, especially by lay people, is the fact that they are purported to be specific diseases, but they're not. They're generic manifestations of overall global systemic Connective tissue breakdown, the same connective tissue breakdown that occurs with age, although maybe if you have a so-called disease or a diagnosis, it's more accelerated. Despite the idea that you got all of these different diseases and all of these different diagnoses from a healing perspective, they should be thought of as a generic 
manifestation of a connective tissue breakdown. And the same kind of strategies that you employ for anti-aging are exactly what you have to do if you have Sjogren's syndrome or dermatomyositis or polymyositis or vasculitis or Sjogren's syndrome. You've got to do the same things. That's just, this is one of the most important concepts that we talk about on this program. The same health strategies are important for me or somebody who doesn't have a health, a, a full-blown disease state. You have to do if you have vasculitis or Marfan syndrome or Wegner's disease or any other connective tissue disorder. Whatever your connective tissue disorder is, whatever flavor diagnosis you have, you got to do the same things a healthy person has to do, except you got to do it with more vigilance. You have to do it with more conscientiousness. You got to pay more attention to it. I can get away. I don't have a full blown disease state, state, so I can get away with a certain amount of sugar or something else uh, or, or alcohol or other connective tissue destroying uh, elements. But somebody who has a full blown rheumatic disease, lupus or scleroderma, they don't have the window. They don't have the, uh, the, the leeway that I have, but it's the same kind of things. I still have to do my bone broth protein. I still have to do my vitamin C. I still have to avoid sugar as best as possible. I may not have to do it with the same kind of intensity that somebody who has a full-blown disease has. This is so important. We all have to do the same thing. This idea of specific diagnosis and special diseases only benefits specialists because that's how they get paid. And what's even better about this idea that uh, all connective tissue issues are generic is the fact that we can use the skin which has the connective tissue in the skin as a diagnostic tool for assessing and monitoring the progress of various disease states and seemingly cosmetic issues, skin issues like, like telangiectasia, which is a, a redness in blood vessels that show up in the skin or rosacea or skin sensitivity. Skin sensitivity, by the way, is a connective tissue problem. Human skin should not be sensitive. If you've got sensitive skin, you likely have a connective tissue issue. It may not be a full-blown connective tissue disease like scleroderma, but it's along the same lines. Maybe not the same intensity, but along the same lines. Yes, plain old sensitive skin is a connective tissue issue. Sun sensitivity, redness, all of these are possible signs that there's some kind of connective tissue disease that's percolating, that's beginning underneath. Because we have access to the skin in a way that we don't have to the internal milieu, we can use topical strategies to stimulate the production of the, of the connective tissue. Yes, you should definitely be doing bone broth protein if your connective tissue is deteriorating, your skin connective tissue is deteriorating. Yes, you definitely want to make sure you're on, on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, making sure you're using vitamin C and essential fatty acids, by the way, also very important for building connective tissue. But because we have access to the skin from the outside in, there's lots you can do to help generate the production of connective tissue at the topical level. Skin peels and exfoliation techniques are awesome. Skin peels are something everybody should be considering. Find an esthetician, get yourself a skin peel once a month or once every couple weeks if you're really serious about it and do them at home too. And don't be put off by the word skin peel or by the word peel. It's not really a peel. That's kind of a colloquialism. It's more like a rapid exfoliation. And this is where acetic acid and the alpha hydroxy acids come in. Time to take a break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lots of lines open for you. We'll come back with you and your phone calls and more good health information on the bright side right after this. are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lots of lines open. Actually, we have all our lines open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the connective tissue or acetic acid, or if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, or if you've used our true skin health products, love to hear what you have to say about those. 844-236-6010 is our number. You can purchase all our true skin health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, and you can purchase Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 to purchase products, or if you have longevity questions, or if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Our number today, 844-236-6010, and uh, if we get calls, we'll get your calls here in a bit. Reading from... The uh, journal Medscape, or the website Medscape, new warning about benzodiazepine use and dementia risk. Valium is the classic benzodiazepine. There's lots of different ones now. 
Lunesta, Restoril. They used to have one called Dalmane. These are really popular drugs, the benzodiazepines, and they're very interesting drugs. Lots of people are using them. They're among the most, most popular muscle relaxant and anti-anxiety prescription medicine. Now we've got a new warning about benzodiazepine use and dementia risk. Another study that links benzodiazepines, there's, there's all kinds of studies that link benzodiazepines to increased risks for dementia, and this one in particular to Alzheimer's disease, dementias. No surprise there, folks. You can't take a drug and not have side effects or toxicities, and you can't take a brain drug and increase your risks for dementia. I don't care what, the, what this warning says. I don't need to see a warning. I'm telling you this as a pharmacist. I'm telling you this is somebody who studied drugs. You cannot take Valium and not expect to increase your risk for brain diseases. You cannot take a drug and not increase your risk for any disease. And that's just the way it is. They call it worrying results. Researchers investigated drug use from 1995 to five years before Alzheimer's disease diagnosis. And what did they find? An increased risk for dementias and Alzheimer's disease for, by folks who take, take these uh, benzodiazepine drugs. They didn't mention Parkinson's disease, but I'm telling you, you're going to have an increased risk for that one too. You cannot have a uh, you cannot not you cannot not have an increased risk for brain disease or like dementia or Parkinson's disease if you're taking these drugs, especially long term. And many people are taking them long term. If you're drinking alcohol or smoking cigarettes with them or eating sugar with them, you're going to increase your risks. And that's just the nature of drugs. That's just the way it is. Comorbid. Um, by the way. There's lots of ways that you can, lots of nutrients that you can use to achieve relaxing effects if you're on Valium and you want to wean yourself off or on a benzodiazepine drug and you want to wean yourself off. And you should always wean yourself off of benzodiazepines if you've been on them long term. You don't want to just stop taking them. Use niacin. Use your ultimate niacin. That's a great way to help wean yourself off these downer type drugs. Use magnesium. That's another great supplement for helping wean yourself off these downer kind of drugs. Also, uh, something called GABA, G-A-B-A, which is a nutri uh, not a nutritional supplement, but a, a dietary supplement that you can get at a health food store. Use lithium orotate. That's another great one. Use glycine. That's another great one. All of these can be used to re help you sleep if you have uh, sleep issues. They can be used as anti-anxiety agents. They can be used to help, you help wean yourself off of benzodiazepines like Valium. They're anti-seizure. From the uh, journal Dermatology, the journal of the American Academy of Dermatology, I should say, comorbidities in alopecia areata. A comorbidity is a disease that's associated with another disease. And comorbidities are very common. So in other words, if you have, for example, psoriasis, you're more likely to have heart disease. Heart disease is said to be a comorbidity in psoriasis. Comorbidities in alopecia areata. Alopecia areata is an autoimmune disease where your hair falls out. Alopecia areata is an autoimmune disease, and if, you're, if you're, uh, uh, your hair is falling out in patches, especially in the scalp, it also you can lose your hair in the bo uh, body hair. Sometimes hair will come out in patches, then it will grow back, then it will come out in patches again. This can go on for many years. This is an autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks the hair follicles. And if you have this condition, you're more likely to have Metabolic syndrome, which is a, a version of or, or associated with diabetes. You're more likely to have lupus. You're more likely to have thyroid disease. You're more likely to have a vitamin D deficiency. You're more likely to have psychiatric diseases. This is what I was saying earlier. Diseases are generic in the sense they're just the body falling apart. We may focus on the hair in the case of alopecia areata. But there's other things that are going wrong in the body as well because the body breaks down as a system. If you have a chronic degenerative disease, you're more likely to have lots of chronic degenerative diseases. If you have one chronic degenerative disease, the likelihood of having other ones are, are, are much higher. And this is why trying to treat the hair if you have alopecia areata is such a waste of time because it's not a hair problem. It's a global systemic problem that affects the entire body. And this is why working on the digestive system is so important. Because digestive toxicity and malabsorption of nutrients is behind most of these long-term chronic degenerative diseases. If you want to do one thing that will not only affect the disease you're targeting, but the entire body, and reduce the likelihood of a comorbid or associated disease, and decrease the likelihood of accelerated diseases, 
and increase your longevity and increase your longevity, work on your digestive system. I call that simplexity. Complexity is all the different diseases. You go nuts trying to take care of all the different ways the body can break down. You go to this specialist and that specialist, and they give you this drug for the hair and that drug for the bones and that drug for the, this drug for the blood sugar system. But if you work just on one place, you simplify the whole process. That's called simplexity. The simplicity that underlies complexity. Simplexity in the terms of multiple disease states that occur in multiple parts of the body is the digestive system, the gut, the intestine. That's because toxicity enters into the blood to accelerate or, or, or initiate the disease process at the level of the digestive system. And malabsorption occurs at the level of the gut to also initiate or accelerate the disease process. Work on the gut first. That's why I'm always focusing on the digestive system. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to California and say good morning to Melody. Welcome to the Bright Side. Melody, how you doing? Hey, Ben, how are you? Christmas came early for me a couple of weeks ago. I ordered a whole bunch of your truth treatment stuff. And, oh, nice. Uh, I First love time? The, uh, no, it's maybe third, but I okay. got the honey cleanser. That's yeah, you, 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 I want to eat it. It's so, so good. <laughs> what do you think? Um, it's wonderful. And then also the, um, I got the other one, the peppermint salicylic. Oh, you got both. Cleanser. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now I have a question with, with the salicylic cleanser. I use the retinol. So should I wait, hold off uh -uh. on using that one? No, just see how your skin together? does. You should be fine. Is it the retinol 5% or the retinol 1%? Yes. The 5%. Which one? 5%. 5%. Are um, you using it every week? How, how often are you using it? Well, I stopped using it for a while, so my skin has to get used to it again. So I started doing a little bit of the peeling, and it lasted about a week and a half. So I You peeled for again. a week and a half? It was dry. It was, like, dry. And I was okay. using the sea balm and all, the, all of that. All right, hang on, Melly. Let's, I want to. Sure. I got to take a break, but I want to give you some good info. Okay. okay, so so don't go away. I'm pharmacist Benny. Four four two three six sixty ten is our number. You're listening to the bright side, and we will return after this commercial break. Don't go away. Side eight four four two three six sixty ten is a number. We've got lines open. I'm talking to Melody in California. Hey, Melody. Hi. Where in California are you? First of all, uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, I love, I love that area. Where? Are you coming out here anytime soon? You know, I don't have anything scheduled, but I do go out there all the time. I've been to, I've been going to Sacramento a lot. I've been working with uh, Arden Hill Spa. I don't know if Dara is listening. Arden Hill Spa is an amazing spa resort. If you are ever in the Sacramento area, every year they win like best spa of the year in NoCal and really beautiful place. So I've been going to Sacramento a lot. Um, anyway, where, where did you say you were? Uh, the Bay Area, really close to SFO. SFO, okay. I can see, I, uh, the, I can see the planes landing. Okay, great. Place. All right, cool. Are you in that valley there that's off to the, off to the west, I guess? It's a beautiful valley. Uh, I, was, I drive to Santa Cruz. Yeah, or well, south. Right. We're a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit south of San Francisco. Twenty minutes. Okay, gotcha. Twenty minutes away, right by okay. the Okay, so uh, here's the deal: yeah. retinol, the retinol five percent gel, and the uh, peppermint cleanser go hand in hand. You just want to see how okay. your how your skin does. Uh, peppermint salicylic cleanser is very interesting because it does have half percent salicylic acid, but because it's got all the it doesn't have any anything harsh in there. Uh, no harsh surfactants. You can use it pretty regularly. You, you can use it every day, really. You'll just have to see how you how you react in combination. But you should not have a problem using them using them together. But just go by how your skin does. But that's why I came out with the. Uh, that's why I have both cleansers, the high hyaluronic honey, so that if you don't want to use the peppermint sal or you want to take days off from the peppermint sal, you can still get the benefit of a cleanser that doesn't have any harsh surfactants or preservatives or any anything that's going to do damage to your skin by using the high hyaluronic honey cleanser on your days off from the peppermint salicylic cleanser. And a lot of folks do buy both cleansers. Okay. 
Okay, right. so, yeah, so the I, retinol, and then the retinol 1%, I came out with the retinol 1% so that in your, uh, you don't, if you, if you have that kind of intense peeling, but you still want to use retinol, you can use the retinol 1%, or you can use the retinol 1% gel between doses of your 5% gel. So if you do your retinol 5% gel, say every 10 days, you can use the mm -hmm. retinol 1% gel in between those 10 days. Oh, okay. Like maybe once or twice in between those 10 days. So those also go, go well together. Was that, okay. was that your question or did you have something else? No, I actually had something else. Um, okay. I wanted, I've been taking the collagen, you know, the collagen, uh, like a protein powder that you put okay. in. Is it your collagen? Smoothie. Well, hang on. Is it collagen or is it protein powder? Those are different. Um, it's a collagen. Where are you getting it's it? Collagen. Um, I've had different ones. This one, this one's actually collagen protein from Bulletproof, but then I also have collagen, hydrolyzed collagen peptide, which okay, is they're a little bit different. Collagen. They're a little bit different. Now, I don't know the Bulletproof product, but collagen is a tripeptide. It's made up of three peptides. So if you get straight collagen, you're going to get the tripeptide, the three peptides in the collagen molecule. But a lot of folks, and I do this myself, will take collagen peptides, which are the building blocks of collagen. So you, in one product, and I can't say, I'm not totally familiar with the Bulletproof product, so I can't say for sure, but typically a collagen powder will be just the collagen, which is still great. Your body will break it down, but you can still mm -hmm. get the raw materials for building it. But if you take the collagen peptides, you're going to get the straight raw materials for building it. So it's not a bad idea to do both. And uh, I don't know if you're also using bone broth protein that contains collagen. That's even, a, that's a third product. That's completely different because bone broth protein is the protein, all the protein that's found in the bones or in the, in the entire, uh, whatever they're using. Typically they'll use the bones, uh, but you never know in the bone broth, they may be actually have, they may actually be meat in there as well. So bone broth protein is protein. Collagen peptides are the peptides, the building blocks for collagen and collagen is straight collagen. Also, by the way, gelatin is a cheap way to get collagen because gelatin is collagen. So you can get powdered gelatin and that's a cheap way to do it. Uh, you always want to make sure, by the way, that your, uh, that your collagen is organic if possible. Um, yeah. it's th that, that's the kind of an interesting thing about collagen and, uh, and the, and the bones too. Bones tend to a lot of heavy metals and toxins deposit in bones. So you want to make sure that you're getting clean animals when, or bones from clean animals, I should say, when you do your bone broth protein and, uh, there's some bone, there are organic versions of bone broth protein. I don't know of any organic collagens, but they're probably out there as well. Okay, so it's because I remember listening to you before and talking about not taking excess protein because I'm not a really super active person. I do yeah. exercise, but I want the benefits of the collagen, but I don't want to take too much protein. So you're saying to do the collagen peptides, that would work? Do all three. Um, you, you definitely need, three. you You benefit from protein, just don't want to do too much. Protein can get turned into fat and protein can right, raise your blood sugar. Yeah. So okay. if you're not that's using the protein and you're, if you're not like working out a lot or recovering from surgery or in a mm -hmm. growth phase, if you're a kid or something like that, you want to be a little bit respectful of protein. People have the wrong idea about protein, basically from, from Dr. Atkins and the Atkins diet and, and now the paleo diet. People think they can just ingest all kinds of protein and not have to worry about burdening the body. It, as it turns out, protein is very quickly turned into sugar. Uh, and that can throw off your blood sugar and also make you gain weight. So if you're not using your protein, you don't, you don't want to take too much protein. That's pretty good thinking so what, on your part. What's a good amount? Like what, what should be a, a standard no, amount? No, for... there's no real way to know. Half a gram per pound of body weight. It's really no way to know. Okay. Just look at how you're, just look at if you're eating a lot of protein and you find yourself gaining weight. That's a good indicator. Um, okay. that, that really is the best indicator. If you're getting fat, but you're, you're paleo and you're still gaining weight or you got, you got a gut going and you're eating lots of burgers and, and, uh, steaks, uh, the chances are you can, you can probably reduce your protein intake better, even better though, okay. Melody. Why don't you get yourself a treadmill, uh, a tra uh, mini trampoline, a rebounder I do. and jump on a rebounder every again. Day. Oh, you do a rebounder. I do every and, and I usually do it when I'm listening to you at this point, I, <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Bouncing. I do it for like 10 minutes or so. And oh, that's then excellent. Another, totally, another unrelated question. Earlier, a couple of days ago, you were talking about using magnesium for, yeah. um, for like blood pressure and for asthma. Yeah. How much? How much do you use? How you know, you all, the, the how much question is really tough, but I, I would say a gram to two grams a day kind of thing. Uh, okay. There's just no way to know. But here's the thing. Whenever you take one nutrient, 
like as a drug basically like to, for drug like mm -hmm. effects magnesium for asthma magnesium for blood sugar magnesium for sleep that kind of thing magnesium for the heart mm -hmm. um you want to make sure you're balancing it out with all your minerals in the case of magnesium vitamin d calcium uh uh also uh uh, the other zinc, the other minerals, they all go together. And so it's, you don't, if you're going to take magnesium, get yourself on a, a complete nutritional supplement program, especially magnesium and especially calcium and vitamin D calcium and magnesium in particular ha, are in a, held in a balance. So if you're getting a lot of magnesium, you can run into calcium issues. So you want to make sure you're taking calcium with magnesium. Vice versa is also true. If you're taking calcium supplements, you want to make sure you're balancing it out with magnesium. And calcium and vitamin D also go together. So that's kind of like a like a, a big three triad, calcium, vitamin D, and magnesium. Um, so you want to make sure you're taking all those together, and you also want to make sure that you're taking the, everything in conjunction with an entire nutritional supplement program. And that's the beauty of all the longevity supplements, what they call the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients and the Healthy Start Pack. You get them in a balance. So if you're going to take magnesium, make sure you're balancing it out with other nutrients. Okay, so if you're, on the, if you're taking uh, the... the uh, beyond tangy tangerine would that along with no the you're not, you, you'd, you'd want to throw in the osteo or? you'd want to throw in the osteo okay. and the ultimate efas that you get the entire 90 the entire mighty 90 essential nutrients okay. Okay. so yeah if you want to just do one and you want to experiment and see how nutritional supplementation works for you if you've never supplemented before or you're, you're curious about the longevity products the btt the beyond tangy tangerine is pretty well rounded but uh, you're not going to get enough magnesium probably so you want to throw in the osteo fx you're probably not going to get enough uh, vitamin d and you're definitely not going to get any your enough essential fatty acids so i definitely recommend all three together Okay, so the OsteoFX has the magnesium in it? Is that yes. the product that I would... Yes, okay. yes. Yeah, and the OsteoFX is magnesium. Yeah? I'm sorry. And then out of the EFAs that Longevity has, there's like three different ones. Which EFA, do you recommend? I like the Ultimate EFAs. Ultimate EFA Plus, I'm sorry. Ultimate EFA Plus. Ultimate EFA. Okay. Yeah, All right. yeah that's, okay, that's my favorite one. And also, just if I could throw one more thing in, whenever you're yeah. taking, a, speaking of combinations, whenever you're taking essential fatty acids, you always want to make sure you're taking vitamin E with your essential fatty acids. Vitamin E is a fat protecting uh, vitamin. It protects fats in the body and it'll also protect fat that you use supplementally, and you'll get some vitamin E in the ultimate EFAs, but it's a good idea to throw in a little extra vitamin E. Longevity doesn't have a vitamin E supplement, so you have to go out of your way to get that. 400 okay. international units a day, and look for mixed, mixed, M-I-X-E-D, mixed vitamin E, tocopherols, and tocotrienols. Thanks for your call, Melody. I appreciate it. Thank Hope you. Helped you out. All right. Have a great All right. day. Okay, All right. That's it. And uh, we're out of time. On the Bright Side, please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for our true skin health products. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a beautiful, wonderful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.